We're still in December and that means we're still in December. So this month, a group of YouTubers are creating videos about DOS and DOS applications. And actually, this channel is always about DOS. It's about DOS or FreeDOS or the classic DOS applications and games that we love. And sometimes we also talk about programming, writing your own DOS programs. And in fact, this summer, we did a YouTube video series where we taught you how to write your own FreeDOS programs in the C programming language. That's what I want to talk about today. Because I also write for opensource.com. And a couple weeks ago, we started a uh, article series where you get to explore different programming languages by examining a simple game, like a number guessing game, where the computer will pick a number, a random number between 1 and 100, and you have to guess that number. And so I wanted to show you how to write that simple program in C on FreeDOS. Now there's not really anything special about doing this on FreeDOS, but I do want to show you how to write it using the OpenWatcom compiler. Uh, so here I've got uh, just a, a FreeDOS uh, system booted up and let's go into my devel directory. Now uh, before I start compiling, I actually need to set my environment. Uh, my environment doesn't have uh, the uh, uh, the variables that I need to run the compiler. Uh, so if I were going to try and run uh, WCL, for example, which is the Watcom compiler and linker, uh, that, that one's not found. It's actually under the uh, OW directory under Devel. So you can see uh, under here, I've got several compilers, and we'll go into uh, OW, which is where the open Watcom compiler lives. Actually, to make this entire thing simple, there's a uh, ow set env bat file, uh, which I've modified slightly. So I'll do a uh, type on that so you can see what it looks like. Type ow set env dot bat. And you can see uh, up top, I haven't changed it at all. Most of this I haven't changed, which is you know basically setting the different DOS environment variables uh, like Watcom, uh, adding Watcom to the path, doing the include, add path, uh, things like that. Uh, at the bottom, I've added one line, and that actually allows me to run the Fed editor. And so I do that because I like to use Fed to edit my programs. And so if I type fed and I get a uh, bad commander file name, I've reminded myself that I need to set my environment. So let's go ahead and run that OW set env. And so there we go. Now we've set my uh, my environment. By the way, that environment path not set just means it's not setting the uh, the, the the boot time, the auto exec uh, path. It's, but it is actually set here. If I just type out path, you can see that I now have at the front the uh, uh, my open Watcom bin directory. So let's back up one directory. Let's actually create a simple guess the number game in C. So we'll do this uh, using the Fed editor. Uh, and we'll call this guess.c. I like using fed because it colorizes the source code so you can kind of see uh, what's a keyword and what's a number and things like that. Uh, I've modified the color scheme so that it's got uh, white text on a blue background. You can change it to be whatever you like, but I've just chosen uh, this white on blue background. For me, it just works really well. Uh, so to write a program, we always need to start with this include um, standard IO. H. These are uh, header files. Uh, we talk about that in the programming series from earlier this summer. Uh, standard I.O. is used for all the different standard uh, input and output functions like uh, printing text to the screen or reading uh, input from the user. Uh, we're also going to be doing some stuff with random numbers and also uh, picking a time from the system. And so for that, we need to include uh, standard uh, lib.h. Now let's go ahead and write our program. So we can do uh, our main program is always started by calling it uh, main, which is an integer uh, function. I'm not going to use any arguments from the command line, so I'm just going to have an empty parameter list there. So let's define some variables. I'm going to need one variable that's an integer that is the random number that the um, computer is going to pick between 1 and 100. And then uh, another variable uh, we'll just call guess, and that's the, the user's guess. So let's go ahead and, and now have the computer pick a random number. And we need to first uh, seed the random number generator, because we could use the random number function as it is, but it's always going to be the same number. So we should always. Uh, apply a seed to the random number generator on DOS, so that way it's picking a new random number every time. To do that, we're going to use the srand function. 
Now you need to give it a number. So you might give it a number like, I don't know, one, two, three, four. Uh, that will certainly seed the random number generator, but every time we run the program, it's going to always give it that number, one, two, three, four. So we actually want to have it pick a number from the system. Uh, FreeDOS doesn't actually have a system-based random number generator like Linux does, so instead we're going to seed the random number generator using uh, the system time. And we're going to do that using the time function. And if we pass the value uh, null, then it's not going to return anything back through the uh, argument list. Normally it's going to return a value back this way, but it's also going to return a value uh, through the function call itself. And so I don't, I don't need to have anything uh, in my parameters. So I'm just going to pass it null. And so now that's seeded my random number generator with the system time. And now I can pick a random number uh, using rand. And so I'm going to pick uh, rand num because that's the variable that's going to hold on to the random number. And um, I'm going to have a random number uh, rand times uh, 100, because, uh, I'm sorry, mo uh, modulo 100, sorry about that, um, and because rand is going to generate a large integer, and uh, that's going to be uh, of any kind of a range, but it will be a positive number, uh, and I'm going to do a modulo 100, and that will force it to be between 0 and and 99. Uh, there's some edge cases here. I'm not going to get into picking the perfect random number, uh, but there are some edge cases around uh, 100 and using the modulo, uh, but this is good enough for what we're trying to do. Uh, now that's going to give me a number between, as I say, 0 and 99, so I want to actually add 1 to that. So let's go ahead and put brackets around this and then add 1. I don't actually have to have the brackets because of uh, precedence, but I'm going to just do brackets because it's easier to read. And so that way we know that it's going to be picking a random number, uh, and then it's going to uh, force that to be between 0 and 99, and we're going to add 1 to it. And that gives me a random number between 0 and 100. And so let's have the user guess, guess the random number. And so let's go ahead and print a prompt back to the user. So we'll say put s, pick a number between 1 and 100. So I'm going to enter a loop here while the user then picks a random number. Every time we go, the, go through the loop, the user is going to pick a number and then we're going to see if that's the right number or not. So we're going to do this. We want to make sure it goes to the loop at least once. And the best way to do that is with a do loop. And we'll do the while statement at the end. So we're going to do some stuff there. Uh, as long as while uh, the guess, which we haven't entered yet, but we're going to enter that in a second, while the guess is not equal to the random number that the computer picked. So the first thing we should probably do then is actually read a random number guess from the user. So let's go ahead and say uh, uh, scan f, and that's going to uh, scan a value from the user, and we're going to have a integer. So we'll do percent d that says make it an integer, uh, and then put it into. So we're going to use the ampersand and put it into the variable guess. Now, based on that, we can uh, give some input or give some feedback back to the user. So, um, so uh, uh, give give feedback, and so we could say uh, if the guess is less than the random number, then we're going to print the string too low. Otherwise else if that guess is higher than, greater than, the random number, then print the string too high. That's actually all I need to do because down here you see at the end of the loop, it's going to exit the loop if the guess is equal to the random number. So uh, right after that line, uh, anything that happens after this loop is actually because the guess was equal to the random number. So I can now print back to the user at the end of the, after the loop is done saying that's right. 
And in fact, that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to actually just exit back to the operating system. So I'm going to return zero. Zero uh, indicates when you're returning back to the operating system that everything was fine. If it was a number that was uh, one or greater, that usually indicates there's some sort of an error that happened. Uh, I'm just going to return zero. And so that's the end of my, my program. So before I compile it, let's real quick uh, remind ourselves what we're doing. So we got some, obviously some include statements at the top. Uh, and then I'm starting my main function. I define two variables. Both of them are integers. And the first one is just the random number that the computer is going to use to store a random number. And then uh, another variable called guess, where we're going to read the user's guess of that random number. We're then going to have the computer pick a random number between 1 and 100. And then we're going to uh, print a prompt back to the user. And then we're going to enter this loop. And every time we do the loop, it's going to read a value from the user. And it's going to tell the user if that guess is too low or too high. It's going to exit the loop when the guess exactly matches the random number. And then it's going to print out, that's right. So let's go ahead and exit. So we'll do bring up our menu with an Alt, and then F to bring up the file menu, and we'll do save and quit. So let's go ahead and compile that with the Watcom compiler and linker, guess.c. And we'll check to see if I made any errors. I'm not seeing anything. Well, it says no prototype found for function time. Looks like I uh, missed a function prototype there, but that's OK. I think it'll still compile. Uh, and then uh, we'll go ahead and run guess. So I don't know what the random number is because I didn't print that back out. So I just need to go ahead and pick a random number. We'll start in the middle. We'll say 50. OK, that's too high. So we'll pick something uh, between uh, 1 and 50. We'll just pick 20. And that's too low. So I know it's between 20 and 50, so we'll pick uh, we'll pick 35, kind of in the middle. Okay, that's too high. Uh, we'll say uh, 27, which is kind of roughly between uh, 20 and 35. And that's too low. So I know it's between 27 and 35, so we'll just pick right in the middle and say 30. That's too low. So between 30 and 35, so we'll say 33. That's too low. 34, then has to be my number. There it is. And so that's a simple example of writing a guess the number program in C on DOS. So uh, before I go, I just want to thank everybody who's supporting me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen. So thank you very much for that. Some of you are supporting me at a higher level, and I want to thank you especially here. So thank you there. And before I go, join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.